loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of today and for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We ask for your blessing on us now. By three o'clock on the last Friday of Jesus' life in Jerusalem, everything seemed to be pointing one way and not a good way. On the last Friday of Jesus' life in Jerusalem, the sky turned dark and Jesus died and everything pointed backwards and to the cross. You might, if you're able, want to just turn round to get the effect of that. The powers that be had won the day. The voice of Jesus that calmed the storm had been silenced. Hands, his hands that had healed and blessed, now hung nailed to a cross. He carried the weight of the sin of the world and it looked as though he had been overwhelmed. Everything seemed to be pointing one way. All that could be done for Jesus, this good man full of love, was being done. His dead body cared for. Jane is going to read for us our first Bible reading. Luke chapter 23 and verse 50 to 56. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes. But they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment.
On that Friday, everything seemed to be pointing one way and not in a good way. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? God, which way was he pointing? The creator of life, the breather of new life, the giver of light in darkness. Very early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, God was at work bringing new life. The sound of the bird's song a new day. And as a new day dawned, God's creating life-giving work. We hear where things were pointing in a new direction on Easter morning as Jane continues our reading, Luke chapter 24 and from verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the son of man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Why are you looking for the living? Among the dead, they were asked. God giving life on the first Easter, breathing new life with creation. Let's turn his way now to all that he is doing and celebrate all that he has done. Were you there when God raised him from the dead?
come together as a family of God's people to turn in the direction God is leading us, the way of life and hope and faith through the risen Jesus Christ. And as we turn to God, so we turn to one another and celebrate and share the news that Jesus is risen. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah. We sing together, Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Let us praise God together in our prayers. Let us pray. Lord our God, at the start of this day, the bird song heralded a new day and your gift of new life. We rejoice to add our singing to the song of all your creation and to worship you. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty reigns. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessing and glory and honour and power be to Jesus, our risen Saviour. Loving God, we celebrate with all your creation. We give you thanks for your gift to us of Jesus Christ, we thank you for his love on the cross, his life given for us. We thank you that you raised him to life to show that love always has the last word. We thank you that Jesus gave his life so that we can be forgiven when we ask. And as we look on this day of new life, a new start, a new beginning, 
So we pause to look back, not to stay or wallow in the past, but to leave it with you. And so we bring to you our sins and our mistakes. We bring to you the things that come to mind that we've done to hurt you or others just in the last few days or even hours, or the things that still stick in our mind that we know we shouldn't have done a long time ago. We bring them to you now, trusting that you love us, trusting that you want to fill us with your forgiveness, fill us with your love, and take us forward into whatever lies ahead. So Lord, we admit that we're sorry for all that we've done wrong. We thank you for your forgiveness and we trust it now. And we ask for it. And pray that you'll forgive us in Jesus' name. Lord, you teach us that you want to take us forward. And so we ask that you'll fill us with your peace that passes all understanding. And help us for the Holy Spirit to fix our eyes in Jesus and to follow him and fill us with the love of Jesus. Enough for today and tomorrow and all that lies ahead so that we may make a difference for you wherever you place us today, tomorrow and all that lies ahead. And this we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us and we pray to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Welcome to our worship, whether you're here in the building or worshiping at home now, live or later in the week. And may the peace and the joy of the risen Jesus be with us all. There are a few notices um, as we come together as a church family, and some of them will appear on the monitors. Tea and coffee after the service down at Rendezvous in the New Hall. Come along for a chat and a catch up after that. Um, then the, um, this evening at seven o'clock, there'll be an informal communion service in the new hall um, and some Easter praise. So seven o'clock in the new hall where we continue to celebrate uh, the resurrection together. I put up last week the New Life Choir concert at Moodysburn Parish Church looking for help to host. At least one um, family from Lenzie Union have offered to host. Um, if anyone else is interested, I've got information I can pass on to you. Then at St. Mary's Church in Kirkintillock, there's a prayer labyrinth um, this afternoon. Um, well, you need to be quick. It's from 12 until 2, but tomorrow from 10 until 4. That's at St. Mary's in Kirkintillock. Um, if anyone would like to join the church for the first time or come to think about the Christian faith or think about vows of church membership you took in the past, I'd be very happy to have an inquirer's class, an inquirer's group with no obligation. Um, but just to find out about faith. And if you'd like to be a part of that, then uh, contact me in the next uh, couple of weeks. And I look forward to doing that. Um, thank you to everybody who came along and helped with the Exploring Easter event yesterday. There were over 70 people um, came along of all different ages. Um, thank you to the actors who did that. And it was, it was a really good atmosphere. And thank you to those who provided tea and coffee as well. And thank you to Audrey and to the group um, who have prepared this new pulpit fall um, for us. Um, the radiant um, gold cross reminding us of the light of Christ's love shining in the darkness. And we give thanks for those who made it and give thanks for the love of the Lord Jesus Christ that nothing can quench or take away. Thank you very much. Now, thank you to the children and young people this morning. I wonder if you want to come and join me at the front and we could have a little chat about some of the things that happened at Easter. And I've got some stuff here which we could, um, 
hold up, and then there's a task for all of you to do. But actually, before we do that, um, behind you there, um, I wonder if you could pick up those two bags of rice, because I wanted to say thank you. Last week we said thank you for the 150 Easter eggs that we gave to the Lodging House Mission, but thank you very much. Could we hold up the, whoops, those bags of rice, a kilogram each? I heard from Marion that Lindsay, with help from church, um, I think we sold quite a few of those, quite a lot of those, after the services, um, which um, Marion and Fiona were selling. And we've now reached the challenge. 90 kilograms of rice were sold um, during Lent. And that means that one person can go to school for a year, to secondary school for a year in Malawi with the money that's been raised from buying the kilograms of rice here. So, thank you very much. That's great. Over Lent, the collection of eggs and the rice, we've tried to put Christ's love into action. So thank you very much. Round of applause to everybody for the rice and for the eggs. You can put those down just now. Now, the first Easter. Can you think, was, was anybody up very early this morning. Anybody up early? Elodie, what time were you up? 6.15. 6.15. And was it light or dark then? Dark, I think. Dark, you think. Now, um, anybody else up quite early this morning? I don't know. Nicole, you, you know. But was it light or was it dark? I think it was light. You think it was light, so it must have been after 6.15 then. Kate, what about you? I got up at... 8.15, and it was light. Yeah, it would be light at 8.15, that's just, that is fine. And Ross, what about you? I don't know the time. You don't know the time, but was it light or was it dark? Light. Ah, it was light. Well, because um, I was thinking, I've got the service this morning and I need to get things round in my head, and um, I was terrified of sleeping in. Um, with the clocks going back. So it was up really quite early. Well, it was dark, probably mm, just about half past five. And it was dark. And those of you who were up when it was still dark, I think that's what it would have been like the very first Easter. The very first Easter. The women went to the tomb of Jesus to take things for him. So I wonder if you could... I think they might have been wearing some scarves maybe over their heads. So if you want to take one of these, you could put that over. They're quite clean. You could, um, you could put them, um, there we are, there's some scarves. And they were also carrying, they were also carrying spices to anoint Jesus' body. Would you like to hold those for us? And see, would you like to have a wee, put your nose into that and see what you think. Does it smell nice or? Yeah, it smells nice. It smells of spices to try to look after Jesus' body. And here's some other spices. Would you get him? Aiden, would you like to? Does that smell nice or not? Yes. Yes, good. Well, they were taking, when it was very early in the morning and still dark, they were taking all these spices to look after Jesus' body. Now, We've heard from those who found it was still dark when they got up, but what about when it was, those who got up when it was still light? What were you seeing when you opened the curtains or had your breakfast this morning? And we haven't seen an awful lot of it um, this, um, this year so far. What do you think? And it's still, I think it's still there just now, Nicole. The sun? The sun, yes. So we imagine the women as they went along the tomb, maybe the grass underneath their feet, and the sun coming up. And they might have heard something that Magnus helped us hear um, with the microphone earlier on in the service. What do you think that was that they would have heard as they walked? They saw the sun and maybe would have heard something singing. What do you think? Ross? Cockerel. Well, it might have been a cockerel. Yes, it might very well have been a cockerel. But there might have been other things. Birds. Yeah, there would have been the birds singing. So now we can imagine the women going to the tomb and they found that Jesus wasn't there because he was risen. Now, what I've got is a task for all of you to do in a minute 
we've got daffodils for everybody and we're going to take them round the church just now and then after the service we're going to put them on the cross outside daffodils are amazing i once read that daffodils actually can pop their heads up through concrete it's uh, they're, they're they're really they're amazingly strong just like god's love in fact god's love is far stronger than a daffodil and jesus nothing could hold him down and was raised to life at easter and as a sign of that and what the women found and the men and the others the disciples that found it we're going to share these daffodils around so i wonder if you put all these things down i'm going to give you some bunches of daffodils to take round to everybody in the church and they can pass them along the pews and as you do that we're going to sing together come people of the risen king so ross do you want to head in that direction Yeah, look at those. Do you want? Yeah. Do you want to take some melody? Yeah. Take yeah. my grand. Yeah, I can do this. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, so just keep it. And if folk want to go down to Lighthouse or Bible class, then now will be the time to go.
We thought about the women and the others who went to the tomb from the darkness, the light, the bird song, the sunrise, the grass underneath their feet. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others. What they saw and what they didn't see, what they heard and what they didn't hear. But what happens afterwards? They go back to, often people think it's maybe the upper room or another room. Maybe it's still the upper room where they had the last supper. But wherever they are, the disciples are together and they're afraid. And because they're afraid, the door's locked. So we imagine the women going back, perhaps hearing their footsteps going up the outside stairs of the house, knocking on the door. One of the disciples unlocks the bolt, creaks open. We've been to the tomb and there is nothing there. His body is, is not there. He, we've been told not to look for the living among the dead. We've been told he isn't there. And the disciples, you know how if you've got great news to tell and you come back and you've been thinking about this great news to tell as you've been driving or you've been on the train and you're thinking, when, when I get through the door and I tell them, they will be so excited. And then you're met just with a... <laughs> or you're met with the... And there's such a gap between what you're feeling inside and where other people are. And there's all sorts of reasons for that. The women were still puzzled, but the disciples were clearly not impressed. They'd followed Jesus for three years. They believed that he was the one who was going to rescue their country, and now he was dead, and most of them, couldn't hack the pace and had abandoned him long before he took his final breath. The Bible tells us maybe Peter was a bit of a distance. John was still there at the cross and the women, but the others had given up, afraid, whatever. And then Peter decides he's going to run to the tomb and see what happens, but he's nonplussed as well and comes back. And the women are, I suppose, saying, so Peter, what do you think? Do you believe now? Do you believe now? What do you think? And Peter, we're told, is just left wondering. Not sure. Don't know what to make of it. I don't know where we are, each of us individually, this Easter morning. Which of these, the women, the disciples, <coughs> Peter, we resonate with, who we identify with. Perhaps on different Easter's, it's different characters. But it is a remarkable, unprecedented truth that Jesus is risen. The grave was empty. Why do you look for the living among the dead? How can we believe it? Well, this is the faith that has been handed down from one generation to another. Over the years, I've, I've found helpful different books. Um, I've found the writings of Tom Wright, um, 
who also writes as N.T. Wright when he does his more academic books. And he, he's written a huge book, which I read a few years ago, about the resurrection and all sorts of evidence as to why we can believe it and trust it, what's written. And then this little book by um, a professor of theology at Durham, um, written just a very short book about how we can trust that Jesus is risen. When it seems that, that faith is, is looked down on by so many. Just a quick summary of, of the reasons given why we can trust. No one has ever found Jesus' body. The disciples didn't, the women didn't, and nobody since has found his body. And you know how famous people, their followers prize their body and their tomb. They become places to visit. But nobody has found Jesus' body. Then another perhaps deeper argument is that actually when you think about what people believed in the beginning of the first century AD, nobody was expecting a resurrection in the way that it happened. They might have expected resurrection of lots of people at the end of time. There were Jewish groups who did believe that, but not an individual dying and then three days later returning to life. People who write about these things say that um, the disciples couldn't have made it up. They couldn't have invented this story because they wouldn't have known how to. They wouldn't have known where to begin with the story that's told to us in the Bible. Then there's the evidence of people like Paul who were opposed to Jesus and say, I met him, I encountered him, and changed. In fact, in the Bible, the earliest record of somebody meeting Jesus the, 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 um, is Paul in act saying um, that he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And then lastly, there's just the evidence of Jesus' transformed disciples. That there they were to begin with in the upper room. And bit by bit, Jesus appeared to them. Sometimes we're told it's in the upper room. Sometimes Jesus met them in Lake Galilee. And they were transformed from people who were afraid to people who were ready to go out and tell people, and this was their message, he's risen. He's alive. He's Lord. And actually the church grew incredibly quickly um, after that. And people who write about these things would say that they're, they're, it's really difficult to account for that. The growth of the church if it wasn't true, that Jesus is risen and he is alive. Peter went to the tomb and had a look. And so we take a look ourselves. On this Easter morning, we take a look, and in faith, we look for God's new life in Jesus. But we can't stay just looking forever. For Jesus' resurrection to take root in us, we need to take it in, to accept it, to trust, even though we've got questions. And look to him like those early disciples and say, although I can't fully explain it, Jesus, I believe you're alive and I believe that you are Lord.
all around God's creation are signs of new life. I'm going to hear the bird's song again. And as we hear it, we pray that the new life of the resurrection will take root in us. Peter, years later, wrote, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Thinking about living in the trust and hope of the resurrection of Jesus, Paul wrote to the Corinthians in his second letter to the Corinthians about being able to trust in the resurrection even in the difficulties and fragility of life. So our third and final reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and reading from verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. <clears throat> it is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Thanks be to God. So in faith, we fix our eyes on Jesus for all that lies ahead. And we sing together, the Saviour died but rose again.
Jesus is risen. He loves us from the first of time and without time without end. But that's hard sometimes to keep trusting in what we might say real life as it is. And that's what that reading from 2 Corinthians about the treasure in jars of clay is about. Just got a couple of images on the slide, on the, on the monitors. Joe Hall's painting, I think perhaps subtitled, Can You See Him? And if you look under the crown of thorns, you could almost picture. And that expresses our faith. He's among us. Though sometimes it's hard to make out. Sometimes I've shown this painting to um, school children or girls' brigade or boys' brigade and said, where do you think this is? And they usually say, it's Jerusalem. But it's not. It's actually a view from Loch and Loch. It's here. And you can see, we can almost make out three crosses. And that is the good news of Easter. Jesus alive, not just far away in a distant land in a distant time but now he loves us from the first of time he loves us to the last as we sang a moment ago but as we know living in Lindsay and Ochenloch wherever we live not every day is a day for singing cheerfully loudly about our faith some days, faith is harder. And that is what Paul wrote about. He said to the Christians in Corinth in his second letter, look, we've got this treasure, this Jesus is risen, this he loves us from the first of time, he loves us to the last, but we have it in our lives just now, and our lives just now, in fact, Paul writing about himself, is like, uh, well, I haven't got a jar of clay, but it's the nearest thing because... In Corinth, they specialized in making really cheap pottery. Um, the jars of clay that they made in Corinth were like throwaway, disposable cups. In fact, this one's better because this one's biodegradable. The ones in Corinth weren't. And they were so brittle and fragile that actually you could put a light um, in them and you could see through the light. And I guess that's what Paul's saying. We've got this treasure in jars of clay. We feel so brittle at times. But actually what's happening, even although sometimes we're not aware about, of it, Jesus is living in us. The love that he showed by his death on the cross, the power and life that he offers in his resurrection is shining in us, even though we feel as fragile as a throwaway cup. So, he says to them, here's Easter. It's in real life, your life, my life, now. The context of Jesus, of Paul talking about our faith in a throwaway cup is something had happened to him when he was in Ephesus that really, really shook him. And actually it shook other people's confidence in him. So they thought, Paul, you're actually not that big a success. And we think that following Jesus should be for successful people. And things don't seem to be going well for you, so we're not sure that we can trust you. And the people in Corinth, well, he had a very difficult relationship. Um, sometimes incredibly difficult with the Christians in Corinth. And that's what he was writing into, saying to them, I, I know you don't think much of me. I know you don't think I'm as good, as powerful a Christian as other people who seem to be much more eloquent or having much more successful lives. But he wanted to say to them, actually, Christ living in me, that's genuine. And faith is not about smiling all the time. It's not about things going well all the time. It's about Jesus. And it's about 
his life living in you and saying to them particularly, and I know the truth of that. Because he wrote, we may be hard pressed. Things may be closing in on us. But we're not crushed. Jesus, just as Jesus was not crushed on the cross. And that's Easter. Here and now in my life. We may be perplexed, he said, and not sure which way to turn. But just as Jesus endured the cross, yet knew to turn to his Father, we're not in despair. We don't give up. That's Easter in my life and Easter in yours. Though we're persecuted, not abandoned, though struck down, not destroyed. For Easter is here and now as we trust him. And the challenge of Joe's painting is, can you see him? Will you trust him where we are now? So we're going to sing a hymn of trust and that Jesus is worth all our trust. He will hold me fast.
Let us draw near to God in our prayers, giving thanks in our prayers for others and ourselves. Let us pray. Lord, together with the bird's song, we praise you for the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for the sound of each other's voices singing your praise and the encouragement that brings to each other. We thank you of the, for the promise in Christ of being in your presence always, praising you with all your people of all times and of all places. Lord, we thank you that you love us, but we thank you that you love us not only for our security and our hope, but to bring hope and life in your kingdom to others. Lord, we thank you that you are alive and at work in our community here and throughout the world. So, in faith, we come to you in prayer. Lord, you teach us that you love the world so much that you have given your only son, and he is raised to life. So we pray for the life of the world, that the light of the love of Jesus would shine where darkness seems to have a strong grip. Lord, we pray to you today for those caught up in violence and warfare in the Middle East, in Ukraine, wherever there's conflict, wherever human evil is stoking and encouraging conflict. And we cry out to you in the name of the living Jesus to bring his peace. Teach the nations to learn from Jesus. Bring your peace and an end to conflict. Lord, we cry to you in Jesus' name, and we cry to you for those who are suffering because of conflict. We pray that that will end, and we pray that you would help your people to share the resources of the world so that all may have, everyone may have enough. We thank you for the opportunities we have had during Lent to collect Easter eggs for the Lodging House Mission and to buy rice so that someone can go to school in Malawi. So we pray for the Lodging House Mission. We pray for the work of fair trade and ask for your blessing and your kingdom to come. Lord, we thank you for your church. We thank you for one another. We thank you for the gifts and skills and talents that you give to us. And in response to your love, we lay these gifts of money before you now and the money that we give directly from our bank accounts. And we pray that you will use them and use us to build your kingdom here and throughout the world. We give you thanks for the church in this community, for being able to share worship and witness through the Good Friday Walk of Witness and services together on Thursday and on Friday. So we pray for the churches in our area. Help us, Lord, to point to Jesus, to be faithful to him, so that more and more people will come to know him and accept and receive his love. Lord, we pray for our community, giving you thanks for all that we have here. We pray for your blessing on friends and neighbors and those who are going through a difficult time, 
those who find that life is fragile or that they are fragile. We pray for those who have shared any of their troubles with us, whether health or loneliness, or money or relationships, or work, or what to do with our lives, or how to get through the next days. Lord, in the quiet, we pray for them. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray for your peace, your wisdom, your healing, your guidance, your protection. And we pray for ourselves. We bring to you areas in our lives where we feel fragile and where our faith in you seems stretched. Lord, through the Holy Spirit, Fill us with hope, with love, and peace for each day and each challenge. Settle our lives that we may trust in you. And placing all that is on our minds into your hands and into your care, Help us to trust you and entrust the future to you. Take us from here, Lord, to serve you and to live for you wherever you place us. And these prayers we ask in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you, the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. We close our service by singing praise to our risen Saviour. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. And at the end, if you want to take on the way out the daffodils to the cross outside, and then it will be raised up as a, as a witness to those who pass by of the joy and life and colour that the risen Lord Jesus brings to life and to the world. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son.
Go in peace to love and serve the risen Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain upon you today and always.